Hey guys, I'm here in Preston Castle. It is, according to Google, one of, if not the most haunted places in the United States of America. And why am I here? I was invited here by my friend, Mr. Tim Eagle. He is a photographer that comes here often and it does a lot of work with the castle. So I decided to come here to kind of get a first person's perspective of this haunted place. See if I can make it out of here and also find out what Tim's up to here. So first of all, Tim, welcome. Thanks. Good to, good to have you, good to in, have you in the castle, you know. So let's talk about the castle, first of all. I want to get into your background a little bit, but I want to talk about the castle itself. Okay. Because we're here, if you notice, we're in the infirmary, sitting on the edge of beds that I'm sure a lot of interesting things kind of went down in this particular room. How did you get involved with the castle? I drove by probably seven years ago mm -hmm. and um, actually was moving my brother-in-law out of Ione, which yeah. was close by right here. Mm -hmm. and. Um, the first time I drove by, it was closed off, and of course, I just could see this massive structure that I just wanted into. It's like, come. Yeah. <laughs> and there were no signs, so I couldn't figure out how to get in. Yeah. And so, the last time I made a run to pick up their stuff, I went by, I'm mean, like, I just want to go by and just take a picture. Yeah. And there was a sign up, it had just been put up for public tours. Okay. And so, of course, I wrote the number down and I called right away. Yeah. Um, and. The first shoot that I did, I actually got a group of about 10 of us together, and at the time, we rented the entire castle yeah. and split the cost between all of us. You rented um, this whole place? It's like yeah. 40,000 square feet or yeah. something. Yeah. So we split the cost between a lot of us, because so, yeah. yeah. no way I was going to foot the bill by myself. Sure, yeah. Um, and obviously, it lived up to everything I had ever hoped or dreamed of. I mean, yeah. I have, the texture, the light, everything this in here insane. is a yeah. photographer's dream. Yeah. Um, and then in meeting um, the castle kind of staff, mm -hmm. I just said, why are you not allowing photographers to come in here? Yeah. Um, and I had just started a kind of a, a local meetup group in Sacramento mm -hmm. and um, she said, sure. So we put our first photo day together and I think the first day we probably had uh, maybe 75 photographers. Good, good. And then every year it's consistently got bigger and bigger to where we average probably about 100 photographers per photo day. Very good. And we do, um, the first half of the day earlier in the year when the lights on the one side and then we do the second half to sundown on the other half of the year So cool. Yeah, and it's, it's so so you're you're kind of it feels like the way that you move around this place is like a second home to you now, right? So, you know every little nook and cranny in this place when photographers come here Like what how should they prepare like when, last night when I was thinking about okay? What gear should I bring I'm going to this castle should I bring everything should I bring nothing should I bring lights? What would you suggest? Well, the first thing is not really any power you can plug into. Right. So it's very limited in what you have available. So if you're going to do anything, it has to be battery power. Mm -hmm. But I tell everybody, the first thing is walk in and just look at the light. Yeah. You have a massive windows. You yeah, have massive like we're windows. we're being lit right now by the windows. Yeah, yeah you have massive in windows that are rising in the east and in the west. Yeah. And the light that comes in here is absolutely amazing. And I, like I told a gentleman today, I said, you basically have a massive softbox right here. Yeah. So use the light that exists. Right. Um, so often they bring a strobe in and try and overpower it. And I walk up and I say, just turn your strobe off and look at the light otherwise. Mm -hmm. And they're absolutely amazed at what yeah. they get out of it. Yeah, because this, this kind of light, people work to create this light yeah. in, a, in a studio environment. I mean, like a sterile studio environment, you work all day to create this kind of light. It's already here. Absolutely. And then the texture on the walls and the yeah. environment, and it's a photographer's dream. It is. It is. So, okay. So, so once they got my gear together and I bring, you know, my little, my holy trinity of lenses and my, my, uh, my tripod and all that stuff, and I'm here, I'm ready to shoot. Walk me through what I would do first. Like, you know, this is my first time here. You've been here 900 times. So yeah. my first time here, what, what should I do? Well, you'll just, I think, walk around and get a lay of the land first. Yeah. Get a, kind of just walk around on a little self-guided tour just to see the light. Yeah. Um, everybody always kind of just gathers in the front area and starts shooting right away. And I tell people, just go towards the back and look around. They're scared. That's why they're here. <laughs> How am I but, going in there? <laughs> yeah, but just find the light. I just think, okay. I, always, I just keep telling them, find some light and yeah. just start working the texture and the light and uh, just, and then work your way through and just pay attention because as the day goes along, it shifts dramatically. And it, it does. Like, and, even during this interview, it's shifting, you know, as yeah. we, that's, that's amazing. Okay, so find the light, you're in here, do you suggest they bring a model in here or just shoot architectural type shots or, or what? It depends on the type of shooter you are. Mm -hmm. um, I, there is enough texture and objects that if you want to just shoot texture, you will spend oh. 
an eternity just shooting that. This macro in here. Um, just, yeah. I think it's just it's prime for models. Mm -hmm. um, ballet dancers, um, you know, if you want to shoot goth, something dark, obviously this is great for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it's a great for models to have, you know, in multiple outfits. I've shot editorials here. Yeah, it's um, like a built set already. It's yeah. like, it's just ready to go. Yeah. Um, so a little bit about the castle here. So photography, yes, yeah. so photographers, yeah, if you're gonna come, you definitely need to come to this place. Uh, but the lore, as we were driving up here, you know, uh, we learned that some stuff went down at this castle. You know, so tell me what you know about what happened here well, that, that makes it the most haunted place in the I will tell States. you that I didn't believe anything. Kind of like me, I, skeptic. I, I did not believe in ghosts. I did not believe in any of that stuff. Um, but the things that I have had happen now personally, uh -huh. I, that I have seen, that I have heard, yeah. um, I am 100% believer. Really? 100%. I, there's no denying it for me. And you're being serious now. I'm 100% right? serious. Like, what have you seen? Have you seen like bodies levitating no, or no. screams um, or I've, somebody putting their hand on your shoulder and there's no one there? I've heard voices first off. Yeah. Um, I've had personal things disappear. Now, were you drinking or anything at the time? No. Okay. okay. No. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> I've had small things of mine disappear and then find them two weeks later in a totally random spot when there was nobody here. Oh. Um, a, uh, a tool bag. Yeah. Um, I finally had seen something that I couldn't explain about three years ago and um, had mentioned it to Yvonne, who's part of the foundation, and she knew exactly what I was talking about and where it was before I said it. And so it was something that other people had seen and it had occurred to them too. Well, tell me what it is. Can you? Well, so I, yeah, it was just, it? it was a white mass on somebody's shoulder and we, it had been preceded by somebody clearing their throat right next to us. Really? A male like, voice. Like somebody did, like right next to us, there were three of us standing there and we all looked like somebody was standing next to us clearing their throat. I looked back up and on the lady's shoulder was a white mass. Oh. Um, and I did the whole rubbing my eyes thinking there's gunk in it and not believing, looking back and looking at her. And, and it's she's, still there? And she says, what? And I pointed to it and she turns and it disappeared like that. Huh. And so... Um, all right, so now you're a 100% believer. Yeah, and I have audio that backs it up that I've had recordings. So, this, and so speaking of that, TV shows have been here. Yeah. Like Ghost Hunters and... and the Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures. Yeah. Um, they did that um, series, uh, The Great Escape, I think, did some of their stuff here recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've had documentaries here, different things like that. Yeah, we were reading on the, on the site that you can actually spend the night here if you want to. Like... No, if you want to. <laughs> there, there's no sleeping. Yeah. There's so no spend sleeping. the night doesn't mean sleep. It no. means stay, stay alive. During yeah. The night. And I've been in here late at night and I have closed up and um, at night in the dark, it is insanely intimidating and I don't get scared. I get insanely intimidated in my house, let alone come here. Yeah. Walking through this place at night in the dark, clearing it out, making sure everybody's gone is, uh, you move a little quicker than I think normal. Yeah. Especially after seeing the, the apparition. Okay. So let's, let's talk about what's going on today. So today was a photo day. Yeah. As I was pulling up, I saw, you know, the photographers leaving, the smiles on their faces, yeah. you know, and now what, what are we doing here? So I, we actually brought a few models over. We have two ball, uh, ballerinas mm -hmm. that are high end ballerinas. We have one um, fashion model. And so we have a wardrobe stylist and we're just going to kind of take advantage of some of the light that exists. Yeah. I brought you a fog machine. Awesome. Um, and then we're going to use shop lights from Walmart yeah. or Home Depot. I and, love uh, the, that stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, those lights cost me all of, I think I, the one yesterday was 1279. And we're going to see what we get out of those 1279 lights. Light right? bulbs. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Cool. Okay. So let's talk about you a little bit. So your history as a photographer, how'd you get started in all this stuff? Is it, a new hobby for you or you've been shooting for decades? I've been what? shooting for decades. I picked up a camera in middle school and okay. never put it down. Wow. Um, yeah. And I, I studied art in college. So you remember film then? Oh, I know film. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm almost to the point where I'm equal in film and digital time spent. Oh, okay. So, so you're shot, catching up. Yeah. yeah, I was medium format, a Bronica for years. Yeah, um, Mia. And I, yeah. Shot, I shot weddings with my with Bronica medium 6, format. 6 yeah. yeah, because you had to. That was like your real photographer if you have medium format at the wedding. And I was on my own and I had my holsters with magazines and yeah. shot 220 films. So yeah, so I'm a film. Uh, you were yeah. that guy. And I still shoot my Lomo all the time. Yeah. I still have two Lomos that I shoot with. Are you still doing weddings? Oh, uh, no. No? <laughs> As he says with this day, no. No, no. Um, and you're commercial now. I'm commercial mostly. photography, yeah. So um, I spend most of my time on larger accounts mm -hmm. that in some cases take 
you know, a few weeks of planning. Good, good. And, and you know, on those larger accounts, are you able to use your your Home Depot or Walmart lights? I have shot magazine covers with shop lights. Really? I, I see. Had, that's I'd, that's the see. That's the question. We we brought this up on a previous episode of, of this week in photo. Like, do expensive lights create better photons than cheaper lights? Right? Yeah. The lights that, you, that we have here, do they create a different kind of photon than, say, pro photo lights? Right? Yeah, it's a cheaper photon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheaper photon. But it looks great. Yeah, it's, yeah, you can charge the same amount for it. But I did a magazine cover and I laughed because it was probably 80 bucks in lights that I spent to make that. Yeah. And you yeah. would never see And then I have a fine art series that, um, of body painting that we've used shop lights on for years. And um, it was awarded the second best in the world at one point. And then nice. even when the album covers we shot with that was voted by AOL Radio, like the second best album cover that year, Very artwork cool. wise. So, Very cool. Yeah, and then the other thing that we throw into the mix is that we throw flashlights into it. And so, you know, we I have, know, we so have your... Uh, you're like Batman. Yeah, we have a little flashlight here. Look at this thing. This is like the flashlight of flashlights right here. I'm not going to shine it in the camera. It'll probably destroy it, but this is crazy. Yeah, What's, so... Why do you use flashlights? Um, I love, in this case, this flashlight it's really close to daylight. Mm -hmm. um, its ability to control and even its pattern is very smooth. So I'm not getting a weird shape if I use it as a fill. Yeah. Um, and people look at me so funny when I use it as a fill light, but it absolutely... Light is light. Light is the light. The photons out of that are the same kind of photons that come out of Profoto. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, being married for you know, 20 years with four kids, um, they get shoes before I get lights. There you go. So you learn to adapt. It's called evolution, right? You learn absolutely. to adapt to the environment presented to you. Right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so um, we got shooting to do before we lose light, right? Yep. So where, uh, where should folks go to find out more about the castle and to find out about you? Yeah, PrestonCastle.com. Okay. And then for me, it's Engle Photo, so it's E-N-G-L-E-P-H-O-T-O.com. That's it. And there Perfect. we are. And you're on social media and all that stuff? Facebook. Too? Instagram, not, not Twitter, but not really Twitter. Yeah, yeah, mostly Facebook. Yeah, Facebook, and Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Thanks a lot for the invitation and the interview, and let's go do some photography. Let's go. All right, all right, guys. I'm Frederick Van Johnson, Tim Engel. We're in Preston Castle. If we survive the rest of this day, you may see this interview. So, I guess if you're watching this right now, we survive. So, we'll see you in the next interview.